Well, before we get going here and uh, get out to my buddy's place, I figured I'd show you the tools that we're going to be using to uh, blast this thing. I am not going to be using a standard dry sandblaster. I've decided to try using a wet sandblaster. I picked this up off of Amazon. It's a pretty simple unit. You just hook this up to your uh, pressure washer. It's got a pretty standard end on it, so it should fit any wand that has the replaceable tips. Ultimately, you just hook up the hose and the pickup tube, and then you drop it in a bucket of sand, and you, uh, you just start blasting. We're going to be using coal slag, not sand. I was able to go to my local tractor supply and pick up 50-pound bags of um, a medium grit coal slag, and uh, should should work pretty well. I did pick up one bag of uh, coarse grit, but I'm afraid it might not actually suck up into this. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But uh, that's it. It's pretty simple. This unit only cost thirty dollars on Amazon, so I'm hoping things are going to work. We'll just see how it goes, and uh, at the end of the video, I'll let you know my thoughts on this thing as far as whether or not it worked, and then uh, that's it. So now that you know what we're going to be using here, I'm just going to finish packing things up, and uh, let's head out. Uh, I just went through and double-checked everything to make sure everything's tight, and really all we got to do now is uh, hook up the tow bar, push this outside, and uh, we'll get on the road. All right, well we made it. So now we're just gonna go ahead and get the car disconnected. We're gonna get it pulled over where we're gonna blast it and then we'll, uh, we'll get everything taken apart. Uh, once we got it set up, we'll, uh, we'll show you what's going on. All right, well here we are. We've got started on this uh, just to test things out, make sure it's working and uh, tell you what, it's working real good. Now that we know what's going on, we figured we'd bring you in and let you see this. The whole reason we're out here is to go after this event. So before I lose any more sand, I'm gonna go ahead and go after that and try to get all that paint cleaned out. And then uh, after that, the rest is gravy. So we're just gonna fire things up and get going. Hang tight.
All right, here we are. We're back. And uh, truthfully, it's been a week since we finished the blasting. And uh, what I've done since then is I brought the car home, I let it sit and dry, and then I got the vacuum and the air hose out, and I went through and cleaned out all the sand out of all the corners and really did the best I could to make sure we didn't have anything left behind. One of the problems with sandblasting is you, you get sand everywhere. Back when I restored my Dodge, I sandblasted that as well. And to this day, I still have sand leaking out of, you know, the frame rails and stuff like that. And it's just a, it just gets everywhere. Uh, this car is not as bad. There aren't as many hidden pockets, but there's still some. So I'm sure we'll be doing more vacuuming as we go. Because we were wet sandblasting, um, we did have a lot of rust that showed up in all the bare areas. I figured that was going to happen and uh, I was prepared. What we've done is I've got this product here. This is Osfo, which is a uh, painting prep. Really what it does is it removes any surface rust that's on there and uh, prepares it for, for painting. And it really does a nice job. Now what I did is I just put it in a spray bottle, sprayed it on all the bare areas and just let it dry. Um, I do want to wash off any residue that's on here when we get ready for paint, but for now it's going to leave a protective barrier uh, just to make sure we don't have any more rust happen. And then when we get around to actually priming and, and doing all that work, um, we'll wash it one more time and at that point we'll just follow the directions. So let's take an up close look and uh, just so you can see how things turned out. Well here's the engine compartment and as you can see uh, almost all of the paint is gone. Things are looking real good. There's still some spots that I missed, but I'm not too concerned. I can sand that off easy enough. Over here on the sides, you can see that I didn't even bother going after that because this is a pretty easy area to access. I figured I'll just sand that off when I get there. I was really trying to conserve the sand, so I only focused on the corners and the really awkward spots. So that's why you're still seeing all this. Now I made sure to get this little channel here. This is for the engine seal. Um, there's still some spots down in there. This thing's pretty beat up. So once I get everything straightened out, I'm probably going to have to go in there and scrape out the rest. But for the most part, it's, uh, it's looking real good. There's still some areas that are going to need some, some final cleanup, but that was to be expected. You know, I've got all the seam sealer here in these corners. Once I peel that out, we'll have to clean up the remaining paint that's down below that. But that's really not a big deal. As long as the bulk of it's gone and most of the hard stuff, that'll make our job uh, a lot easier. Now one thing that uh, doesn't surprise me, and I'm going to show you in a few other areas, you can see here there's a, there's a hole right in the body, and that's actually a rust hole. There's quite a few spots that uh, once we got to cleaning them up, you know, these holes started appearing. Not a big deal. Just some more work for us, but uh, you know, comes with the job. And here's the area I was most concerned with, and that's the rear air intake. All of the paint off of the the vents out here is gone. There's still some remaining residual stuff, but that'll all scrape and sand off pretty easily. Inside, I was able to get a majority of it. There's still some spots that uh, I just couldn't get a good angle with the pressure washer. You know, if we look at the side over here, you can see that there's really no paint left in here because I was able to get a really good angle in there. And the same thing over on the, the right-hand side. It's mostly in the middle here where I've got the, the remaining paint. And again, it was just hard to get a good angle in there. But I should be able to reach up inside between these louvers. You can see my hand up inside here. And I should be able to hand sand the rest of that, maybe take a like a paint stick wrapped in some sandpaper and shove it down in between the vents here and do the rest of the sanding. But uh, I would say that uh, for a $30 tool and uh, doing it on a cold windy day, uh, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. All right, well here is the right rear quarter window. And I, sh I told you there were some areas where there was a bunch of holes that showed up. and. Here's the, here's the first one we're going to look at. And this little back corner here is, is all rotted out. Really, really thin and lots of holes appeared. So this is going to end up being, being some extra work for us. Uh, again, I'm not too concerned. It's 
kind of just comes with the with the job but I was hoping that I wouldn't have to do as, as much of this as I'm going to end up with but you know you can see the rest of the frame here uh, really turned out pretty nice I did not do the top half of the window frame uh, and that was mainly because I was trying to conserve sand again you know I wasn't worried about there being too much if any rust up in here so we'll just we'll hand sand this to get the rest of this paint off of there and uh, you know same thing on the other side here's a, a view of inside of the door seal channel and you can see that I was able to really focus down inside there and get all of that get all that old paint cleaned out of there I didn't get the rest of the door frame here but this I can actually reach so we'll just hand sand that again but all in all it's good to have a nice clean surface so we know that once we get new paint in there we're not going to have any problem with our uh, with our door seal adhering once we get that glued back in place so that's uh, that turned out pretty nice and now for the worst of it this is the front cowl area right below the windshield uh, this is where the hood seal goes and there are just tons of holes in here this is probably going to be the the most work for us as far as the rust repair goes at least from here forward and uh, all along this whole area is peppered with with rust holes i knew that there were some there you could see them before we even started working on the car once we started sandblasting they just opened up like crazy and it's still really thin around all these holes so we're gonna have a lot of material here that we're gonna have to uh, gonna have to be patching to be honest it's a lot worse than uh, I was I was expecting but you know we're this far into it now so we're gonna have to keep going now there were some other areas that we worked on um, we kind of hit the fender mounting surfaces here just to clean those up and see if there's any holes that showed up there and I did have right here the this lower quarter panel um, has a bunch of a bunch of rod in it I needed to do a small patch here anyway or at least I thought it was small um, now I see that it's much bigger so we're gonna go ahead and just order up a, a quarter panel patch and we'll just replace this this whole section there you saw us uh, when we were blasting that we tipped the body up on its side just so I could get the underside and get that cleaned up I'm not worried about the bottom being perfectly clean because the rest of it I can do by hand so we'll get that all cleaned up when we get to that point but for the most part um, we were able to get all of the important areas the stuff that really would be difficult to work on uh, by hand as far as the rest of the body goes and getting that stripped I wasn't going to do that with the sandblaster because I don't want to run the risk of warping the panels so we are going to be using a chemical stripper on that but these are nice big open panels and I will just be careful to keep it out of all the corners and uh, once we get the bulk of it removed then we'll come back and, and sand up close to all the edges as far as the sandblaster goes uh, let's grab it and I'll, uh, I'll give you my thoughts on it so here it is here's our $30 wet sandblaster and I'll tell you what I was thoroughly impressed I wasn't sure if my pressure washer was gonna have enough flow to actually make it work but uh, it turns out it had plenty in fact the very first bag of sand that we tried uh, disappeared rather quickly this thing just sucked it up like crazy uh, and, and truthfully it ended up being kind of a waste what we ended up doing to help correct that problem is we just simply took a we just took a small pair of vice grips and crushed the tube right above the, the pickup and shrunk the diameter down maybe half to a third of its original size and uh, we just found the point where it would still suck material but not go through as much and that worked really well so the last three bags of sand uh, lasted probably twice as long you know what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and I'll throw a link down in the description so if you're looking for something like this uh, you know it's just an Amazon link you'll be able to go right there and pick it up and like I said uh, my pressure washer only has a 2.5 gallon per minute flow which I thought was gonna be on the low side but for this it actually worked real well so for 30 bucks totally worth it
The coal slag I used was uh, $10 a bag, so pretty reasonable on that. And uh, all in all, real happy with this job. Well, there we are. We are all done. And realistically, things are looking pretty good. It's really nice to have this done now, so I don't have to worry about it, you know, later in the winter when we do actually get to do body work. I'm just going to keep an eye on it, and if things look like they're rusting, I'll hit it again with the OSFO just to make sure it stays protected. But until we get there, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So for now, uh, we're just going to call it done, and I think, uh, I think it's time to move on to floor pans. So make sure you come back for that, and... Uh, until the next one, I'll just see you around.